turning out to be just a gorgeous day down by the bay. The Mariners set off on their final road trip before the All-Star break. And just on the other side of the hills, we find ourselves down by the water at downtown San Francisco. Normally, we head over the bridge and go to Oakland, but tonight, we start a rare interleague series against the San Francisco Giants on the other side of the Bay Bridge, right there at Willie Mays Plaza. We are happy to have you here inside Oracle Park, one of the most beautiful settings in the entire game. It's a sellout crowd here tonight. Fireworks post game as the Mariners come to town to open up this three game series against the team right now. If the postseason began today, they would be the third and final wild card spot, these San Francisco Giants. Here's what it looks like for Scott Service and the Mariners today facing a good pitcher in Logan Webb. J.P. Crawford batting to the top of the order. Things look a little bit different and not long after that because Ty France given a day off. So Jared Kelnick will bat third. Cal Raleigh does the catching today. Mike Ford making his first start at first base in the absence of Ty France. Dylan Moore and then Colton Wong rounding out the order today for the Mariners. Uh, Logan Webb has been an innings eater so far this year for skipper Gabe Kapler just over 110 innings so far this year one of the highest marks among all big league starters. He's coming off a rough start. He allowed a season high five runs. They all came in the first inning against the Blue Jays but he really settled in after that sat down 12 of the next 14 batters he faced and we know this he will keep the ball on the ground best ground ball rate in all of baseball so it'll be up to these guys to catch it behind him. Jack Peterson normally DHs, but the Giants have been so banged up. He's had to play some outfield recently. He's in left. Matos in center, and Yastrzemski just activated off the injury list is in right field. Schmidt and Wisely up the middle. Sable does the catching with Davis and Lamont Wade Jr. on the corner. And we are all set to go as J.P. Crawford climbs in. And Sims, if we know this, you cannot ask for a much better setting, a much more beautiful night to begin this road trip. It's absolutely perfect. Thank you, Aaron. And good evening, everybody. J.P. Crawford leading off first pitch brought to you by First Tech Federal Credit Union. J.P., nice series against the Rays. Five for 11 takes first pitch strike. And we're underway. Lance Barrett balls, balls and strikes tonight. Ramon De Jesus, the umpire at first. Alfonso Marquez at second and Doug Eddings. At third, 60 degrees here in San Francisco. Only two here to JP. Aaron, how about the Giants? Their lineup did come out till inside an hour. First pitch felt like five minutes ago. <laughs> Here's the next pitch to JP. Strike three called. Didn't swing the bat. One down. Well, JP known so much for working and at bat and it seems like in particular they're beginning a ball game with Logan Webb coming out firing strikes on our EQC tracer JP knows it fastball right over the plate. Here's Julio. First pitch from Logan Webb outside Giants. They're a little sleepy it's understandable their game yesterday was rescheduled to a night game and in New York they got in at about 4 30 a.m. Julio quickly ahead in the count. Had a good bat last couple of games. Five for his last ten. Right. Logan Webb trying to stay away from him. Sunshine's going to be affecting the center fielder and the right fielder for a while. So he strikes out J.P. Crawford on three pitches. Walks Julio on four. Now this is a fairly rare walk for Logan Webb. He doesn't strike out a ton of batters. As we mentioned, he's more of a ground ball pitcher. He certainly is a ground ball pitcher, but he does stay away from the walk. So a rare walk early. Hopefully the Mariners can take advantage of that. Yes, indeed. Here's Jared Kelnick. If he'll pull around to the right. Julio, not a big lead. First pitch to J.K. It's in there for strike. Logan Webb at Rockland, California, from northeast of Sacramento. He's a quarterback and a linebacker in high school football. That tells you how tough this kid is. There it goes. Pitch swung on a foul back. Julio is in good shape to get stolen base number 20. Now one thing every left-handed hitter will be very mindful of today, and that is the changeup from Logan Webb. That is his bread and butter pitch. And it has really stifled lefties this year. One of the best changeups in the game. 
Seven and seven record, three four three ERA. Coming to this point, backdoor breaking ball, got him looking two down. Now and here you have it on our EQC tracer. He's able to turn that over and just clip the lower outside corner. And right on cue, Kelnick takes that for strike three. Kick two down. Here's to Oscar Hernandez. First pitch here to Tail. Baseball first strike. Tail one for four yesterday, an infield hit. Two for five on Saturday, and the Mariners. They were feeling really good about themselves after taking two out of three against a very good Tampa Bay ball club. Julio has to dive back. He was leaning. After that Friday night game when they got pounded up four nothing and give up 15 unanswered, what felt like there was this funeral going into Saturday's game, and they come back with the win and come back with the win on Sunday as well to take the series. Julio good lead again leaning again he gets back. Well, hopefully that turns out to be something we look back on when the calendar flips over to you know, the end of July sometime in August a real turning point for the Mariners because that was a very momentous series win. Julio doesn't go hit hard right field backing up Yastrzemski makes the leaping catch. At the 365 side, he hit it about 362. Mariners turned away in the first. And Brian Wu is going to make his debut here in San Francisco. Hometown kid. The second straight start, Brian Wu will have to face six left handed hitters. Trying to really stack them up with Lamont Wade Jr. and Jock Peterson at the very top. Mike Yastrzemski, that hamstring looks all right after that catch we just saw. And we see more lefties at the bottom of the order as well. And Sable and Wisely. This will be a tough task for Brian Wu. Uh, Dave, you mentioned uh, homecoming. He grew up just on the other side of the bay, born in Oakland. This is going to be an emotional start. There's no question for Wu. I think Scott Servers may have put it best. First couple of batters. Let's see if he can get through those first two. What do we got? Oh, gate was open. Nice catch there by Lance Barrett, the home plate umpire. Anticipating cooler temperatures, the umpires dressed accordingly. Here's Wu with his first pitch against the team he grew up rooting for, the Giants. Lamont Wade Jr. leads off. And good looking fastball right there. Rated 279. Nine homers and 27 runs batted in. Giants coming off a two and four road trip. And time called. They went one and two at Toronto. Cal Riley going out. Hopefully there's no pitch clock issue. Maybe they have that's what it is. Two and four in a road trip. One and two at Toronto. One and two at the Mets. They lost the two games, last two games at the Mets. Four and one and then eight four last night. That was odd. I saw Cal look in his helmet, but we didn't see anybody pitch up, pick up a pitch com and put it up to their ear like we normally do when somebody's got some equipment that's acting up. New age we're in. Here's the 01. That is tag. Straight away center. Julio towards the 391 mark. Looking for it. Finds it. Makes the catch. <laughs> and Ryan Wu can take the heart out of his throat now. You want to play outfield tonight? Man, the wind is really going to have fits with the outfielders. We already saw Julio. Dylan Moore in left. Kelnick in right field. Prophet and Wong up the middle. Meanwhile, Suarez at third. Mike Ford making his first start at first base this year in Cal Raleigh doing the catching. One blown out hard towards the bay, towards McCovey Cove. Blown out hard to right. It's Jack Peterson. I mean, how many times have we ever seen Julio spin a 360 practically like he just mm -hmm. did? He plays such a fine center field, as we all know. To your point, too, it wasn't distressed by it. You know, sometimes you see a guy's got to, you know, whoop, whoop, whoop. He hung with it. And strike one to one. Peterson to be followed by J.D. Davis. Wu in his sixth start. A lot of strikeouts. 32 strikeouts and 22 and two thirds. 
Good fastball as Jack loses control and that is stuck in the screen for a moment. One and two. That's got to make you feel good if you're Brian Wu. The hitting coach is saying, hey, at least you weren't strangling the bat. Nice and loose with the hands. Peterson, veteran, been with the Dodgers, been with the Cubs. Four doubles and two triples on the season. J.P. Crawford playing up the middle against him. Way late, look out. Ooh. Camera well. One fella just ducked in a nick of time. So the Giants, they had a nice stretch from June 11 to June 21. They won 10 consecutive games. Swing and a miss for strikeout for Brian Wu. Quick two outs here in the first inning. Well, that is just straight overpowering a hitter. A 96, just above the top line of the strike zone. Just going right after him. Tell you what, the young pitchers, Wu and Bryce Miller, George Kirby, they do that really well. Hey, this is what I have. Let's do this. Here's J.D. Davis at third base tonight. Swing and a miss. As for the Giants' offensive profile, Ninth in the big leagues. These are all major league rankings. Ninth in runs per game. Runners in scoring position, third behind Texas and Tampa Bay. 14 out of 30 in batting average. His next pitch foul back. All right now they're sizing up this fastball and they see that it's pretty dug on good. 13th in hits, 11th in home runs. 12th in OPS. As for ERA, tied with the Mariners, ninth in the major leagues. We're way out front. Two out, nobody on. 0 2 is the count. Struck him out. That's a fine debut in his home area for Brian Wu. First time pitching here in the San Francisco Bay Area, and he goes 1, 2, 3 in the first. Kick off the second half of the season with a bang on Friday, July 14th at All-Star Fireworks Night presented by T-Mobile. The Mariners will be capping off 2023 All-Star Week with a fireworks celebration after taking on the Tigers at 710. Mariners.com slash fireworks to get your tickets. It'll start a, or be a part of, I should say, a nice 10-game homestand to begin the second half. Looking forward to that, looking forward to the break as Cal Raleigh looks at the breaking ball for strike. Cal Raleigh. Eugenio Suarez, Mike Ford, 5, 6, and 7 against Logan Webb. Webb is around the plate and then some. And two strikeouts looking in the first inning. Walked Julio on four pitches. And Teo hit one deep to right that Yastrzemski made a leaping grab at the last second. Cal behind, 0-2. Giants, third place last year, 81 and 81 year before. 107 wins. Down in the dirt, but lost in the division series to the Dodgers. Gabe Kapler, their skipper, manager of the year last year in the National League. Two and two to Cal. He goes down to any third strikeout already for Logan Webb. I mentioned the change up against lefties and you can see just dropping down on Cal Raleigh. This is one of the better starting pitchers in the National League. This is not an easy start to this series for the Mariners. Finished 11th in Cy Young voting last year's Gino looks at strike one. Suarez with his ninth home run on an 0 2 pitch yesterday second inning against Tampa Bay's Taz Bradley. It's this one hard past the diving third baseman J.D. Davis. First hit for the Mariners, their second base run. Well, no pitcher gets more ground balls than Logan Webb in all of baseball, but when you hit him this hard, you got a pretty good chance of getting on through, which is exactly what happens for Gino. 
Brings up Mike Ford getting the start at first base. Ty France, you know, was in that collision yesterday with Zach Paredes. Ty, is that the first time you've been hit that hard since playing high school football? Yep. What positions did you play? He said, fullback and linebacker. I was this big in high school. One <laughs> 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 pitch. The looper gets down. Base hit. Mike Ford. Nicely done. Couple of men aboard here. If I was that big in high school like Ty France, I'd definitely be playing football. Oh, As Mike Ford just takes this the other way. The Mariners with some traffic here in the second inning against Logan Webb. Well, I had car crashes against guys that size my senior year in high school. We'd have been going head to head. Fullback linebacker here too. Glad I stopped. Dylan Moore, 224 hitter last year, scuffling this year. He said multiple injuries, wiped out of spring training. He's got the one home run. It was at Yankee Stadium. It's his only hit, one for 21. Some time to start producing here. Man, we got a good crowd here. Just a gorgeous setting, as Aaron told you about here in San Francisco. The wind is now shifted, blowing out towards center. Debo pulls it foul. Mariners were last year in 2020. That was during the pandemic. Remember the, the orange brown sky? The last time broadcasters and writers were down here was 2018. In that 2020 season, Giants swept the Mariners in four. Out straight back one and two. We remember that sky because we looked at it on our monitors at T-Mobile Park. <laughs> Those were the days. Looked like the end of days. This guy here. I thought someone was going to put something on the thing live from Mars. All two strikes with two on. Early threat here for the Mariners. Well, good job to flick that out of play. Giants are hoping that. Webb can eat a bunch of innings today. He went with a bullpen day yesterday. He's not pitched fewer than five innings in 17 starts this season. A one two. Swing and a miss. Down goes Dylan Moore. Two outs here in the second inning. Fourth strikeout for Webb. Well, this is a page out of Brian Wu's book. This is what we saw Wu do in the first inning with his heater. What we've seen from Webb, no surprise for a ground ball pitcher. Everything has been down, 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 both the changeup and the slider. And of course, that two seam fastball as well, but that time he rides it to the top of the zone and gets already his fourth strikeout. Colton Wong. <laughs> Strike one. Pace slowed down just a little bit with runners on base. A one pitch taken outside. Wong last year, 11th in the Cy Young vote, 15 and 9 record of 2.90 ERA. Wong would like to get a personal hit streak working. It's out foul. He's bat twice. 0 oh and 2. Colton Wong, 23 hits in his 144 ABs coming in. In today's action, 1 2 pitch. Strike, three called, he knew it. Back to back strikeouts, five for the first two innings for Logan Webb as the Mariners are turned away in the second. Tonight's Muckleshoot Casino Pen Report. This Giants bullpen has been one of the best in baseball since the start of June. A 2.96 earned run average. Camilo Doval, their closer, the Giants' lone all star. Oh, 
Oregon State product Michael Conforto the ex Met leads off he's DHing today Brian Wu first inning the fly ball deep to center Lamont Wade and Julio ran down then he struck out Peterson and Davis and he's already ahead of Conforto With their own two, Conforto, Yastrzemski, and Matos, four, five, and six. Conforto using his timeout. That first pitch slider to Conforto was the first pitch that hasn't been a fastball from Wu. He's in command right now, 0 and 2 to Conforto, a 236 hitter. About 415, 430. This afternoon, Gabe Kapler, the skipper of the Giants, he had no idea what he was going to do. The lineup, and he didn't have one until about the 6 o'clock hour. Waiting for MRI results and other testings going on. Oh, a throw duck right back through the box. Base hit, Conforto. Conforto with a first base knock for the Giants. Well, this will be interesting tonight. Brian Wu for the second straight game is facing six left handed hitters in the lineup. This is the first changeup that he threw this evening. He's coming off throwing a, what is a career high amount of changeups against the Nationals. And they overall lefties hit him all right. And they hit him pretty well against the Nationals. Now Wu still pitch well overall, but the first changeup that he throws gets put in play for a base hit. It's a pitch he'll might need. Like Jastrzemski just off the IL. First pitch strike. Grandson of the Hall of Famer. Carl Yastrzemski, the great Red Sox left fielder who succeeded Ted Williams in left field at Fenway Park. Gino in on the grass at third. Wong and Crawford at double play depth. In on his hands, foul back. How'd he get to that? That cast powered by Google Cloud as you look at the infield defensive alignment. Julio shading a couple of steps towards the left. Comes heel two. Long hold by Wu. One and two. Boys, young man. Brian Wu, even some of the times he's had difficulty thinking back to that game in Texas. Show a lot of emotion. Nice and cool. One and two. Stopped by Cal. Two balls, two strikes. Grew up right across the bay, Alameda, California. Makes the warm up pregame with a football. Like he's had some quarterback experience. He looked pretty impressive on his three step drop. Two and two. Full count. His first three ball count of the early going here as we play inning number two. Runner holds it first and off speed pitch hit foul straight back. Logan Gilbert goes in game two tomorrow. Giants have not announced who they're going to go with. Alex Cobb's been announced as the starter in the Wednesday finale. It'll be a 6.05 start Wednesday, 1.35 tomorrow. And time called by Mike Yastrzemski. Bryce Miller with that finger problem, the blister. Stan Service got to agree with what he said. Hey, looking long term, get him on the IL, get it fixed, let it healed up, and then bring him back. He's been pitching really well. Here comes a 3 2 pitch. Almost hitting. We'll miss the first ever HBCU Swingman Classic. It's presented by T-Mobile. 
coming up this Friday at 7.30. Ken Griffey Jr., he's the host. He's inviting athletes from historically black colleges and universities. Showcase at T-Mobile Park, followed by a special post-game fireworks show. Tickets just 10 bucks, so come on out. Allstar.com. I'll be doing a game on MLB Network with Harold Reynolds and Simone Stanley. Junior's going to be mic'd up. Bo Porter, Jerry Manuel are the managers. Ralph Gar, Vince Coleman expected to be there, all HBCU graduates. Luis Batos. It's game number 18 for him. And we we're trying to get the feeling back here. The way that Gabe Kapler has constructed his lineup, there's a bit of a pattern. Two lefties, then a righty. Two lefties, then a righty. And this is one of the rare right-handers in the lineup for Brian Wu. These are the guys he's got to take care of. Parked inside and missed. Two and two. He has struck out the only other right-handed hitter that he's faced in this game. J.D. Davis behind 2-0. Swing and a miss. Big sigh right there. The battle is way back. Get out of this little jam here. First and second. Nobody out here in the second inning. Didn't find out, but it's got to be a considerable number of tickets he needed for this evening. You know, Jim Miller's working to get uh, family, do an interview with his family here. So they came across from Alameda. 2 2 pitch. Do it again. Well, not a surprise after falling behind 2 0, which has been three straight fastballs to Matos, as you mentioned. One of a number of rookies in this lineup for Gabe Kapler. The Giants have been so banged up by injury. There's Gabe. Played the major leagues for 12 years. Six teams, 2 2 pitch, swing and a miss. Got him. Much needed strikeout. Let's see if he can throw a double play ball and get out of this thing. One out. His third strikeout. 96 just outside of the strike zone and Matos goes reaching for it. This is a guy that he hasn't had many at bats in the big leagues but he hasn't struck out very often. He's had a good eye for the strike zone. And that's a much needed out number one. Mike Sable a 250 hitter. That's well out of play. Happy Fourth of July. Celebration to everybody. Got a full house here in San Francisco. A big crowd tomorrow. The weather's going to be good again. Glad you joined us here at Root Sports. Here's your one. Disable off the fist, hanging up for Dylan Moore. He's got it covered. Two outs. Brett Wisely coming up now. He's at second base. Brandon Crawford, the shortstop, long time shortstop. Get the night off. Wu we'll trying to put it into the second inning for the Giants. It's a good start. Supplement aboard and an 0 1 pitch. It's funny, ever since that leadoff base hit from Conforto, that changeup that he scalded up the middle for a base hit, it has been truly almost nothing but fastballs from Brian Wu. It's bread and butter. 1 1. He's got a chance to put him away right here. Just joining us, Mariners head runners at first and second, top half of the second with one out. Could not move them along. First and second for the Giants here in the home second. 
We'll try to put an end to it right here. And he does. Strikeout number four, stranding two. We go to inning number three. No score, Giants and Mariners. Time now for the American Express level up. And we're talking about J.P. Crawford at 298, hitter runners in scoring position. He's going to try to put himself in position to score for somebody to add to their totals. He leads things off here in the third and looks at a first pitch strike well located on the corner. Crawford, pretty rare A.B. for him to begin the ball game tonight. Three pitches, all strikes, and he struck out looking. Oh, and two quickly. JP calls for time. This is about the only time that JP Crawford ever steps out of the batter's box. He calls for time. He keeps his feet planted in there almost the rest of the time. It's a rare day so far for JP Crawford. Two at bats, six pitches, all strikes, and a couple of punch outs. Strikeout number six. It's rolling Logan Webb. That brings up Julio. He took a four pitch walk his last time at the plate. I well, we mentioned Logan Webb is not a huge strikeout guy, but he has had a couple of double digit strikeout efforts this year as Julio needs to lace those shoes up. He's laughing a little bit looking back out to Logan Webb. On skates right there. One out, nobody on. The 1 1. Julio finds himself behind a ball and two strikes. Mariners have had traffic in each of the first two innings against Webb. Stranded runners at first and second in the second inning for Scott Service's lineup. Coming off two really impressive performances against the Rays. Series win against Tampa Bay, team with more wins than anybody in the majors this year. That's wide of the plate. Good take from Julio. It's a full count. Right back up the middle. Wisely at second base has it. Two away. Take a look at the Fubo TV Mariners calendar. And Houston is our next stop after the three games here, followed by the All-Star break and then home for Detroit. Kelnick fouls away the first pitch. Kelnick struck out looking his last time up. One of six strikeouts early on for Logan Webb. And Webb has worked plenty of innings so far this year, among the very most in the majors. In fact, in eight of his last 11 starts, Logan Webb has pitched at least seven innings. He's been a horse so far this year for the Giants. Two outs, nobody on. 0-2 is laced and out of ball ankle high over to Casey Schmidt. It's a 1-2-3 inning. First time the Webb has retired the Mariners in order. Take a look at the Pemco Insurance Defender of your Northwest. Tom Murphy has been hitting the ball very hard and with great regularity over his last seven games of 458 clip. Four multi hit games, four bombs, eight RBIs, and an OPS was out of sight. Great homestand for Tom Murphy. Brian Wu starts things off at the bottom of the third inning with a first pitch fastball strike to Casey Schmidt, number nine hitting shortstop. Got out of the gates this year 
after he was called up he was on fire at over 340 has cooled down since then couple of well located heaters it's 0 and 2 the bottom four in this order for the Giants all rookies and they have really been beat up by injury The 0 2. There goes the bat, and there is strike three. Woo. That's the second time a Giants hitter hasn't been able to hold on tight. First, Jack Peterson, and now Casey Schmidt. But the beauty of having those screens out there. Ooh, it struck out three of the last four. Back to the top of the order here is Lamont Wade Jr. That changeup misses off the plate for ball one. Now Wade has really had a good first half. Third highest on base percentage in the majors. Nine home runs. He's walked nearly as many times as he has struck out. Cal Raleigh wanted that for a strike, but it was off the plate 2 0. First time through the order for Brian Wu. He with just the one hit, also a walk. Now, this is Smokes. Out to right field. Kalnick is on the warning track. He leaps. He can't make the catch. Wade is motoring into second base and he stands up with a double. Ball got on JK quickly. He made a valiant effort. He made a really good run in making a catch here and recovered quickly to hold Wade to a double and not a triple. See him holding his shoulder or his neck a little bit after this, and you can see why here. Lighting with that padded wall. So runner in scoring position for the second straight inning for the Giants. Here is Jock Peterson. Hold the 1 0. It's in there for a strike. 1 and 1. Now the Giants have been a good team offensively this year. They've had some players change over the course of this season, but it's been a good team with runners in scoring position. As you can see, 283, third best in the majors. They've made the most of their opportunities. The 1 1. Only stays with it. Wade stays put. Best of luck and best wishes of Chris Flexen and Trevor got moved over to the Mets. In exchange for left-hander Zach Muckenher. Some of the news of the day for the Mariners. Who behind two and one? On the ground, Wong is able to smother it, pick himself up, and get the out. That saves a run. Wade has to stop at third. Not an easy play for Colton Wong. One out. And when you see plays like that, that's why you know we're here every day and we see these guys take infield every single day. And it's part of the routine. It's not a problem for him. It pays off. Wu made a very nice play. Again, calmly didn't panic. It makes the play. Kind of hurt himself a little bit, but so he's trying to shake something off. But that was a good play. That keeps a run off the board. Now facing the number three hitter, J.D. Davis. Runner at third base. Two outs. Blows it past him up in the zone. Now Davis struck out on three pitches on a very good fastball his last half bat. 
We would love a punch out here with the man at third base. Weak ground ball. Gino charges, has it on to first. Plenty of time for round number three. Wade stranded at third base. Three scoreless complete for Brian Wu. Mobile coverage cam, the Powell and Mason line. Cable cars, you gotta when you come to San Francisco. This one, and if it's only once, you gotta ride the cable car. Come on. Especially if you're going uphill. Yes. <laughs> Unless you're going for that workout. Teoscar Hernandez puts the first pitch in play, a swinging bunt, and Teoscar Hernandez is aboard. Not that we drew it up, but it all comes out of the wash the same. All he can do is laugh about it. Yeah, a week from now, it's going to be a line drive in his memory. We'll take it. Anything to get something started. Here's Cal Raleigh. Showing bunt and pulling back. All right, now if you talk about hitting some landmarks in terms of home runs this year, obviously Cal Raleigh parked one on the Lansdowne Street earlier this season, batting right handed at Fenway Park. There has never been a Mariner. Splash one in McCovey Cove in right field. First time for everything. Cal also became the third Mariner to reach Utah Street not long ago. And the Mariners were in Baltimore. Giants just recently hit their 100th home run into the Cove. The splash hits. It was Lamont Wade Jr. recently who parked one in the water. Ball and two strikes. Home run that Cal hit last year to get the Mariners in the playoffs. If he would duplicate that, I like the chances that baby getting wet. Routine fly ball into center field. And maybe nothing quite routine tonight with the win, although that one looked like Matos had a good beat on it. One out. Scott rewrite telecast is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Seattle Mariners. One out of one on that infield base hit from Teoscar Hernandez here comes Gino. Singled earlier. Well, there is someone in a Mariners wow. uniform who has hit one into the water in right field that man. Mariners bullpen coach Stephen Boat, his first year of retirement, if we can call it that. Stephen Boat homered as a visitor into the Cobra as a giant. He was a giant for a short while here, for so many years across the bay. We saw him for years with the Athletics, but some familiar territory, no doubt, for Stephen Boat here in San Francisco. I've heard from a lot of guys. Other teams saying he is going to be a manager and going to be a good one. Well, surprise nobody. Four is ahead, two and one. Fans wanted that one, didn't they? Yeah, Steven becomes a manager. I, I think he his, his knowledge as a catcher's playing career, the success he's had, managers played for, it's all gonna work out well. 2 1. Good take from Suarez. It's a 3 1 count. Really ties him up. That change ups to righties as well, not just to lefties. It's been a tremendous ground ball pitch when he throws it to right handed hitters. One out to Oscar at first base. 
Off the fist. A little bloop into shallow left field, and it drops in for a base hit. So let's see here. We've got an infield base hit on a 12 hopper up the third base line. And a little water balloon into shallow left center, but it all comes out the same. The Mariners have a couple of men aboard. We'll spare you the exit below, just their hits. Mariners happy to apply some pressure to Logan Webb. What do you think Mike Ford maybe can get something uh, the, the cove named after Mr. McCovey. Ford a single his last at bat. Takes this for a strike. Now this year with the bases empty Webb has been very tough but runners get on base 300 average 270 with runners in scoring position he's got say Oscar behind him at second Suarez at first good take this is just low one ball and one strike Have certainly made Logan Webb work in this game. It's had just one clean inning. A little more do up next. It's funny you see that pitch count. As both runners move up on a ball that. Gets past Sable. That makes things a little bit easier for the Mariners. It's a pass ball. Man, he clanked that just flat. Missed it. Wow. Two balls and two strikes. And now Ford calls time. And the pitch count. We even though the Mariners have had traffic against Webb, he's been able to get some quick outs and quick at bats. So pitch count in decent shape, all things considered. Infield now comes in. Second straight three ball count from Webb. Remember, he does not walk many batters at all. He's walked just one so far tonight. The Oscar at third, Suarez at second, and a walk to load him up. Mike Ford was not going to chase. Good for him. Well, Ford hasn't had as many walks this year as maybe what his career numbers would indicate he should have, but he draws a good walk there. Got to get runs here. Bases loaded, one out. Little more the batter. We're going to miss expanding badly. Chasing off the plate. There goes that slider from Webb. Now the slider has been a real swing and miss pitch to righties. They haven't done a whole lot with it this season. This time he jams him with a fastball. Now if you're Webb with all those ground balls that he gets, you know, he's thinking, I'm just one pitch away from getting out of this mess. Chance to dial up a double play. Double trying to get something in the air. One out base is loaded. And now Webb steps off. It gets past him. Here comes Teoscar Hernandez, and the Mariners take the lead. First run of the ball game as Sable once again has a hard time corralling a pitch from Logan Webb. Now the Mariners are in front one to nothing. Boy, all gifts will not be returned. Take that. So a wild pitch. It's the Mariners on the board.
Doesn't chase this time. Two balls and two strikes. So that little infield base hit from Teoscar Hernandez comes all the way around to score. Infield in. Strike three call. Dylan Moore not looking. In print and online at SeattleTimes.com. The Seattle Times delivers deep sports coverage to your home desktop, phone, or tablet. Make the most of this season. Visit SeattleTimes.com slash subscribe to sign up now. Two outs for Colton Wong. He shoots this foul. What a frustrating inning for Logan Webb. You give up a weak infield base hit that nobody could get to. A soft flare from Eugenio Suarez. Then you got a pass ball that helped runners move into scoring position and a wild pitch to score a run. One and two now. Got him on the ropes here. You got to provide a knockout punch. The one, two. Line drive, oh! and it's caught by Wade. <laughs> Robbery. Not a surprise, plenty of fastballs from Brian Wu so far. Five strikeouts in total. They've all come on the four seamer and they all have been in the top third of the strike zone or above. He faces Michael Conforto. He's been out the last five games with a hamstring injury. Center cut fastball for strike one. Conforto out of Redmond High School, then on to Corvallis at Oregon State, was a first round draft pick. Did not play last year, injured his shoulder during the winter. First year with the Giants now. You got Conforto, a left handed hitter, Yastrzemski, another lefty on deck for Wu to deal with. He gets ahead of ball on two strikes. Well, we just saw it's been pretty clear cut with two strikes. It's back to the fastball. Not that he veers too far away from it. We'll see if he tries to go upstairs with that heater to Conforto. The one two. He does and he goes way too high. It's two balls and two strikes. Get a good release on that. Porter was on a change up his last at bat, singled it up the middle with two strikes. Zips it in but misses in tight and full count. One walk so far today for Rude. That was for the man on deck, is Trimsky. Here comes the payoff. Temperature dropping a lot here. Right by the bay. It says it's 59, feels cooler than that. 3 2. We lost him. Nice frustration for Wu. Well, not long ago, earlier. 
Our very own Jim Mueller had a chance to catch up with Brian Wu's mother, Hillary, here at the ballpark. I think I might know the answer to this. Since you were sitting by yourself watching your son pitch, but do you get nervous or anxious watching him? I just get very excited. I'm so, I love baseball and I love watching my son play. I love, I've grown up watching baseball and this is like the biggest joy of my life, yeah. Did you ever picture your son pitching in the same ballpark that he came to as a kid? Um, I never imagined, really. I mean, I, I knew what he wanted. I knew that he wanted to make it to the bigs, but this is, this is pretty big. So at what point did you realize baseball was a legit career option for him? Um, it's kind of like baby steps along the way, but he would always verbalize what was next, and he would say, Mom, this is... This is what's going to be next. I'm going to be invited to the Cape Cod League. Mom, I'm going to, you know, do this. And then it would happen. And so when he started saying, you know, one step closer, I knew that this is that he was going to make it happen. It is always special to watch your son pitch. It doesn't matter at yeah, what yeah, level it is. Is there more excitement for you tonight? Is there more excitement? because of where this oh, is, because oh of how God. many family oh members are here. No, it's insane. All day I've been saying, is this really happening? Is this really happening? And he has made things happen. And his grandfather um, is, has not been well. And he's so happy to have his family here. It brings him so much joy. And Brian has brought so much joy to the family just by this game. I mean, it's baseball is the best it is it's so much fun so anyway it's really amazing and being in this ballpark um surrounded by like high school and people from alameda have come out i mean there's at least 100 people here i don't even know that are just here to support him so it's pretty awesome yeah yeah really awesome now the greatest joy of her life Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Hillary, Brian's mother. What a surreal night this must be for her and everyone else in that section. The 0-2. That was a great spot. You could see and feel the emotion. <laughs> Almost to the point where she was speechless a couple of times. That's a great spot to have. Order. Talking about like 100 people or so here from the neighborhood. That's wonderful. He's working with one out in Conforto at first base after the walk. This is chopped softly. Gino charging from behind the mound. A strike to first base. That's a dynamite play by Eugenio Suarez. You know you cover a lot of ground when you give knuckles to the first baseman. No depth up for sure. Good play. Very good play by Gino. And he was super aggressive on this. Cut in front of JP. That was the right thing to do. JP laid back a little bit and on the run. Just in a nick of time. It's been busy over there so far. Two down. Conforto now in scoring position. Here is Blake Sable. 25 year old rookie. Oh, ties him up. 96 mile an hour handcuffs right there running in on him. 0 oh, 1. Tying run at second base. Just in off the plate, called a strike though. 0 and 2. See where the EQC tracer has this one. And Cal Raleigh keeping it close. And getting a strike call. Time called now by Sable. One of six left handed hitters in this lineup for the Giants. Two outs, a man at second, the 0-2. Up and in with that fastball. Now Wu is 
trying to find something against lefties. Strikeout rate is through the roof against righties, and you can see the average in the weighted on base leans very heavy to the lefties. Cal Raleigh setting up in the other batter's box. 412 to 143 the average. So you can see why the second straight start for Wu, where the opposing manager has put six lefties in his lineup to face Wu. Another one, two. Court, center field. Julio racing back. Julio sizing the wall, watching it's gone. Blake Sable, a two out, two strike. Go ahead, home run here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Two to one, San Francisco. Yeah, that one hurt. Like Sable was uh, going to be in the back pocket of. of Wu, but boy, he left that one right over the plate on the one two pitch. Take a look. He was able to get on top of it. Nice job. That's not an easy pitch to get on top of, especially for a lefty. That's pretty impressive from Sable. Now, left hander strikes. Here's Wisely. Blows it past him in 94 for strike one. Leadoff walk scores. Giants now in front. Oh, and two. Just the fourth home run given up by Wu. This is six in his sixth start. Still own two. When we talked earlier about the changeup and how many he threw in his last start against the Nationals, he threw as many changeups against Washington as he had all season combined. Throw many tonight, however. This is softly lifted. In the left field, the win. Dylan Moore makes the catch for round number three. Blake Sable with two outs and two strikes. A go ahead blast in the fourth inning. The Giants in front by one. So much going on right now. Our Corona, what's on tap? How about Gabriel <laughs> Gonzalez with Modesto? 348 leads the league in average and hits second and doubles, having a terrific season. I don't, I don't know what I'm impressed with more, the, the Weber on the kayak or the fact that he's like, hey, anybody got some two buys <laughs> hanging around? <laughs> oh yeah, no problem. I got some old studs I ripped down. That is a thing of beauty, and it's only in San Francisco as J.P. Crawford leads off here, top five. Jed Mueller has a paddling experience to talk about. We'll get to that before long. Two and one to J.P. looking for a different outcome. He struck out to open up the ball game on three pitches. Looking, three pitches swinging the second time. At least now, he's seen his fourth pitch right here, and he dribbles this one to the second base. Easy out. One down here in the fifth. Mariners got their run. Fourth inning. Infield dribbler up the third baseline. Swinging bunt to Oscar Hernandez. Base hit by Suarez. Got him a second pass ball to third. Wild pitch scored him. Mariners left two on that inning. Total of five so far. Here's Julio. Walking the ground out to second. Oh. 
Leonard Fenley looking for Julio to get on a tear like we saw last year. This one hit well, straight away center, but taking care of it is Matos, two down. Good sign, though. Good swing from Julio. That was smoked. Catch a game at a Mariners Bar League affiliate across the Pacific Northwest, including Flat Stick Pub with multiple locations in Washington and Capone's Pub and Grill with multiple locations in Idaho. For a full list of Bar League members presented by Corona, visit Mariners.com slash Bar League. Quick two outs. Here's Keldick. A.K. struck out looking, lined out to short. Four for 11. Coming into this is a base hit, second base umpire. Alfonso Marquez has to get out of the way. Kelnick digging for two, trying to make another hustle. Double, got to get in there. He does. Made from the get go. As soon as he hit it, he was thinking double when he saw where it landed. Nicely done by Kelnick. That's his 20th double. It comes with two outs here in the fifth. 111 off the bat from Kelnick. Good to see him pull the ball with some authority right there. Got the good wheels and he used the throw being offline. Big help. The tail can pick him up. As per usual, they try to work away from Teoscar Hernandez. Drilled one right field back in the first inning. And Mike Dostrzemski made a nice jumping catch. Sun was a factor at that point. Uh, Sawed him off. Takes the first baseman Wade right to the bag. Mariners are done. In the fifth, J.K.'s double goes for nine. Don't miss out on the Mariners' next park at the park on Monday, July 17th, presented by the Farmer's Dog. Snack tickets for you and a furry friend for just 35 bucks, plus pick up a limited edition of Bark of the Park item. Tickets available only at Mariners.com slash Bark of the Park. I guess Steve's all right with everybody knowing where he is tonight. <laughs> Anybody seen Steve? It's nice to meet you. He's playing hooky. He's in trouble because it's all, <laughs> all over TV. Oh, brother Casey Schmidt. Shortstop leads off. Brandon Crawford getting the night off. Strike one. Schmidt struck out on an 0-2 pitch his first time up. He's batting in a nine hole. He'll be followed by Lamont Wade Jr. Jock Peterson. Giants got a two run homer two outs and a one two pitch straight away center Blake Sable back in the fourth. I like to see young pitchers work inside with guys off the plate. Well, that two seamers got a lot of run to it. It really works in a couple of beneficial ways for Wu. one exactly what we just saw pitching in but also a ton of ground balls to righties. I'm old school. I like like that the purpose pitch. Don't get too brave up here. One and two. Mariners have stranded six runners tonight. Three for the Giants. Giants come in third place in the NL West. Three and a half back of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Starting today's action. Did he go? He did. This is Ramon De Jesus. Strikeout number six for Brian Wu. Papa Murphy's presents How to Change the Way You Pizza. Step one, grab a delicious Papa Murphy's pizza. Step two, bake. Step three, chow down on the deliciousness. Right now, get the chicken garlic pizza for just $11.99 at papamurphys.com. Lamont Wade Jr. Double to right. In the third, open up the home first, a deep fly ball to center field. It got caught up in the wind, and Julio made a nice twisting, turning, running catch. JP playing up the middle against him. Pulls this one right to Mike Ford. He'll take it himself. Quick two outs. Ty France getting the night off. No residual effects from yesterday's collision. Don't forget to stick around after the game for Mariners post game. The post game show presented by Emerald Queen Casino. Angie Mentink. 
Dave Valley, Jen Mueller here in San Francisco, full house. We have interviews and analysis coming your way. Two outs, here's Peterson. Jack Peterson 0 for 2. Colt Long made a nice diving play going glove side left for the second out, saving a run in the third inning. Ooh, a little bit upset with himself there going behind 2 and 0. Pitch not. To his liking, in terms of location, he's been able to handle Peterson twice. And as you mentioned, that play by Wong was a dandy; could have been a base hit easily. Two outs behind in the count, two and up. And whoa, that's a late timeout, Randy. Holy! I don't know if Jock knows that he called time. <laughs> There's a wave to Lance Barrett. Let's see what we have here. Yeah, that, that looks like a timeout. He's beefing that? What do you mean? <laughs> What's he thinking about? He held his hand up. Lance Barrett read it. Gave him the timeout. That's 101, isn't it? I'm trying to think of what we might be missing right there. Oh, there are 2-0. Fly ball, Julio tracking in the gap. Woo. Very nice inning in the fifth. One, two, three, go the Giants. When we come back, Cal Raleigh, A. Eugenio Suarez, and Mike Ford for the Mariners who trail two to one. Mariners baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by your Western Washington Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. And by Virginia Mason Franciscan Health, the Mariners' proud partner in health. The Rock. That was a pretty bad shot, Connery. But I don't know. What, I, don't know who else, I don't know who else you think of when you see The Rock. Well, I'm a little older than you. There's Birdman of Alcatraz by the great Burt Lancaster, one of my all-time favorite actors. So there's two guys. Add that to your list. I can't, I can't do a good bird. He's one of the all timers. What a one to Cal. Let's see Cal get the Cal train working here. 0 for 2 tonight. Strike out and a fly to center. And the Golden Sombrero on Saturday with four strikeouts in his five at bats. He's due. 1 and 2. Cal Gino and Mike Ford here in the sixth. Teo scored on a wild pitch in the fourth. Bottom of the fourth, two run homer, two outs, and a one two pitch. Blake Sable, straightaway center, two run homer for the Giants. That's how we got here. One two. Swing, and miss, down goes Cal. Strikeout number eight. Twitter Tuesday is on Root Sports. Join us every Tuesday during the Mariners broadcast. You'll have five chances to win prizes just by playing trivia with us throughout the game. You can find giveaway rules at rootsports.com. Gino having a good night. Two for two. Hard hit single to left. And a bleeder. The little triangle in left center field. Dropped it between the shortstop center fielder and the left fielder. One. Giants here at home, 23 and 19. Mariners on the road, 16 and 22. Mariners with the win again. Would start flirting with that 500 mark again, but two below the mark right now. Giants at 46 and 38. Pitch. On hold there by Sable. Yeah, he's got a good count. Yay! Inside corner for a strike. Logan Webb on the mound for the Giants. One out. Strike three call. Ninth strikeout for Webb. Two down here in the sixth. Right. 
Let's see why he's one of the better pitchers in the league. 12 strikeouts a season best. Also has an 11 strikeout performance is Mike Ford. Give him a foul. And he's had a lot of strikeouts looking as we see. Let's see now which way does it go. Let's see. Uh, that. There we go. Hey, we got Julio helping out. <laughs> Did we have a. Is he making an autocorrect out there? Ford's got to work. Work to do here behind 0 and 2. A quick two outs here in the six. I mean, there's no way the Mariners fans are in charge of the Cape Town here Should at be. Oracle, right? I mean, they are quality people. It's not a surprise they're willing to lend a hand. Foul ball. <laughs> no comment. Well, let's put it this way he's not a ball boy. Did Steve come in from the kayak? <laughs> Quick transformation. <laughs> oh, 2. Wow. Mike didn't like it. Thought it was way low. Strikes out the side. Two looking. Bottom six coming up to one Giants. Tonight's Miller Light moment. It was the go ahead home run. Blake Sable with two outs and two strikes in the fourth inning. That got us to where we are right now 2 1 Giants. JD Davis leads off bottom six. Davis, Conforto, and Yastrzemski 3 4 5 against Brian Wu. Wu, six round pick by the Mariners in 2021 out of Cal Poly. Same school that produced Mitch Hanniger. It's great seeing Mitch. He doesn't want to jinx it, but he hopes to be back from his right wrist injury. Six screws on a plate after being hit by a pitch. Hopes to be back by mid-August. One of the most snake, snake bitten guys I've seen in the last few years. You got Ty Adcock and Gabe Spire heating up. Wish Mitch all the best. When he was healthy, boy, he turned in some good, some good years and some good times for the Mariners. Two and one. Great watching his teammates and the skipper and the coaches going over to greet him during before Mariners batting practice started. Davis 0 for 2. Strikeout. A nice play by Gino. Third. Up the middle. Kick save. Maintains composure. Underhand flip. One down. Now so often when we see that type of ball right back to the pitcher, it knocks around a little bit then. Gets through and just kind of dies between the mound and second base. And through no intention of his own, Brian Wu able to kind of pin those heels together and keep it close by and turn this into an out. You know what, and you've seen it a million times as well. When pitchers have to, I've heard coaches say this a million times, anytime they have to throw to any place other than home plate, it's an adventure throwing at the first base. Watch out in the upper deck sometimes. Here's Conforto. Base hit the center walk and a run scored in the fourth. Two runs on three hits for the Giants to run on five hits for the Mariners. Foul back. Mariners have stranded six. The Giants have left three aboard. None in the last two innings. They get the two run home. Fourth inning from Sable. I wonder how long the leash is right now from Scott Service. You've got the lefty on deck and Yastrzemski. you got a lefty in the bullpen. And Spire, who's been so good against lefties. Close game. See the kid uh, have an opportunity to get the, the out against Yastrzemski, especially if he can get this one here. I think that's the key. Conforto. He's got to learn some way, somehow, right? Strikeout number seven for Brian Wu. I think that's a tough thing you bring up. You got to learn. This is still very much a developmental phase for Brian Wu, his first go around of the big leagues. Yeah. And yet the Mariners are in a position where they got to win games. Exactly. You know, so it's your trial by fire. And not a surprise with nobody on sticking with Wu here. 
the other side of the coin, there's no guarantee you bring in that dude you know, for the bullpen that he's going to have it. He well, could, he could give one up you for know? sure. But you look at Spire this year; he has been he's been good. He's no been doubt. A kryptonite to lefties, and now you got a righty on deck, and Matos and Adcock still warming up. I think the same situation applies here. Two zero. We've talked about the splits this year for Wu. He's only had five starts in the big leagues, but he's he's trying to figure out how to get lefties out. I said learning process. To learn somehow, some way. He's up here now. 2-0. Popped it up. He's going to get out of it. JP. Julio. It's going to be Julio. Ryan Wu. Tip of the cap, pal. Six really good innings. Trailing 2-1. Presented by MasterCard is coming up in just over a week. Check out the Mariners All-Star Game Sweepstakes for your chance at two free tickets to next Tuesday's Midsummer Classic at T-Mobile Park. Enter now at Mariners.com slash all dash star ticket sweepstakes. Now Logan Webb has been very tough. The only run he has allowed came on a wild pitch. He struck out 10 batters as Dylan Moore checks the swing and fouls it away for strike one. He is Struck out Dylan twice. Bullpen is beginning to warm for the Giants and for the Mariners. Says handshakes all around Trent Blank, who is so involved on the pitching side for the Mariners behind the scenes. Handshakes to Brian Wu. And Dylan not seeing the ball well tonight. Having a hard time against Logan Webb. He's not the only one. For Webb, this is his third double-digit strikeout start of the season. His first at home. And he picks up his 11th punch out and his fourth in a row. Yo, Jack, that a baked brownie in my munchie meal? You know it, Snoop. Say less. Leadoff man retired. Here is Colton Wong. Wong inside out slices this into left center field for a base hit. Wong makes the turn but will settle for a single. Well, the Mariners have the tie and run aboard here in the top of the seventh inning. Good to see Wong slash one. That's his first hit tonight after striking out looking and then lining out hard to the first baseman. Wade his second time up. You got J.P. Crawford coming up here. The lefty Taylor Rogers is inside of Gabe Kapler's bullpen warming up. That's a strike. Webb has handled Crawford in three at bats. He struck him out twice. Also got a ground ball out. You have Julio on deck. And then Jared Kelman. Pitch count nearing, getting near 100 for Webb. Wong taken off, 
Swinging a ground ball through the right side. Here comes Wong into third base. And the Mariners make a little action happen here. Well, this is the second time we've seen Scott put the game in motion in recent days. And the Mariners have him on the corners for Julio. Great awareness by Wong at second. He picked up where the ball was and didn't go into a slide. He picked it up and it just kept on going. Had his head down. And he finds it. There he goes and eases on to third. And they figure this is the last batter here for Webb. He can air it out. 98 pitches. You got the lefty Kelnick on deck with the lefty Rogers in the bullpen. And can the Mariners get to Logan Webb at the very end of his night? Easy take ball one. Mariners have the tying run at third base in Wong. And the go ahead at first in J.P. Crawford. Julio has stung the ball hard, and I mean hard, a couple of times his last two at bats. 114 and 110. Ground ball over to short. Schmidt to second, on to first. It's not in time. Julio beats it out, and the game is now tied. Julio hustle. Made it happen. Beautiful. Tapper's waiting to hear from his video room. He will not challenge this. The game is now tied at two. And then Kapler, you imagine, yep, here he comes. He will go get Rogers to face Kelman. Uh, Webb was really tough tonight. 11 strikeouts. One of his best efforts this season. Going deep like usual, and he gives the ball to his manager as this game is even at two. Is out tonight as we take a look at the starters for today's game. Both guys out. Wu on the right and on the left is Logan Webb. There are the numbers that they've turned in. Both guys got into the sixth. Now Webb was very difficult tonight. And Wu, what a start for Brian Wu. Back near home. Grew up a Giants fan and a quality start in a ballpark he grew up coming to. And now Webb turns things over to the bullpen. Taylor Rogers up on the mound, the veteran lefty, former All-Star. And Kalnick looks at a pitch on the edge for strike one. Julio tied it up with an RBI fielder's choice. It was Colton Wong's one-out single to get things going for the Mariners. The 0 1. He pops him up. Rogers points to the sky. And Schmidt backing up at shortstop makes the catch to retire the side. It's time to stretch. The Mariners and the Giants all tied at two. But Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to play Washington's lottery. In fact, over the last 10 years, more than $1.2 billion has been contributed to education. Nightfall here in the Bay Area. We're in San Francisco, Oracle Park. Brian Wu, fine, fine performance by the young man here tonight, pitching right across the bay from where he grew up in Alameda, California. Two, two pitch swing. Racked up seven strikeouts. There go. Really poised at. The one pitch he would love to have back was the one two pitch two out man on in the fourth that gives up to Blake Sable. Yes. And to look at uh, the strikeouts for Seamer big pitch for him this evening. Yeah, I'm not sure where that cutter came from tonight. <laughs> big and plummy call to the pin tie Edcock. This looked good. First pitch misses outside to Matos. Edcock has had a very Strong first impression with the Mariners. Four seam fastball and a slider. Matos fouls it away. Slider over the plate. This is 
Scott calls on the right-handed rookie Adcock. He's got a righty at the plate here. A couple of lefties do up next for the Giants. Brown ball, J.P. Crawford. Routine out number one. Quick start for Adcock and company. Leadoff man retired. And here is Blake Sable, the man who gave the Giants the lead back in the fourth inning. He's driven in the only two runs on that two-run home run. Yeah, should be all smiles tonight for Brian Wu. He was magnificent tonight. Tries to check, hits the strike. A lot of sliders to lefties so far from Adcock. Jams him with a slider 0 and 2. Well, you never know how a young pitcher will handle coming back home and such an emotional start for Brian Wu. Only has five big league starts under his belt and he comes back to the ballpark he grew up rooting in. That team he rooted for. The 0 2. That's a shot on the line out to Dylan Moore in left field right to his chest for round number two. Pacifico is brewed for those who live life anchors up. I think for Woot, uh, you have the emotional element of it, and then you have a lineup that was stacked with lefties once again. There are a couple of things working against Brian Wu in this game tonight, and he was dynamite. Wisely the batter. Fastball just misses outside. Cal wanted that for a strike, but that was clearly away. Wisely just recalled today. Tyro Estrada fractured his hand last night. A normal second baseman. Yet another injury for the Giants. Bottom four batters in this Gabe Kapler lineup. All rookies. Nothing easy about that. Two out spaces empty. Strikes to Wisely. This is lined into right field, a foul ball. Tyler Rogers inside the bullpen. Brown ball stays fair. Four and right there with it. Adcock, another impressive outing. A one, two, three, bottom of the seventh. We make our way onto the eighth. It's all tied here in San Francisco. Beautiful night here in San Francisco and earlier today Jen had a nice time out on the water. We see what she was up to. OK, McCovey Cove is known for its splashdowns. Those are hits that actually, you know, splash down. Here's the thing. There have been 155 of those in the history of the ballpark, but it is really hard to do, despite the fact that it's only 309 feet out of the ballpark in right field. You see, there's a little bit of dimensions that come into play. There's also a 24 foot wall in right field after Willie McCovey and um, oh, 24 feet of sidewalk between the ballpark and the bay. You put
put all of that together and the average distance on a ball that splashes down is closer to 388 or 405 feet. Yeah, Jim, not an easy thing to do. There's never been a Mariner to park one out there. Now the Mariners don't come here all that often. Well, from one Roger to the other, the twin brothers going in the seventh and now the eighth. Tyler Rogers, the Submariner. Oh, rises back. One ball and two strikes. Well, there's one thing that Tyler Rogers really specializes in that is soft contact. He is a hard guy to square up. The ground ball skimming its way out to Davis. In time. One down. This is the first time I can remember watching Tyler Rogers pitch where he isn't wearing white spikes. Now, this is something that he started doing years ago to camouflage the baseball. There's strike one. Just a little thing that he can put in there. The barrel rate, it almost doesn't even show up. Cal Raleigh hits a ground ball to first base. Wade is there. Quickly two away. Two up and two down. It brings up Eugenio Suarez. And Rogers, one of the softest tossers out of any bullpen in the majors. His fastball is barely over 80 miles an hour on average. Gino does not go. It's ball one. That was close. Good take by Suarez. Two balls and no strikes. Rodgers has given up just two home runs this year. The 3 0. Another ground ball. He's spreading it around from third to first and now short. Tyler Rogers retires his side in order, keeping everything on the grass. Mariners baseball is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Revenue. One in seven people have unclaimed cash. Do you? Visit claimyourcash.org and by UW Medicine, top ranked research, care, and learning, working together to improve your health. UW Medicine, a higher degree of health care. Always beautiful scenery in San Francisco, looking at Alcatraz, top of that hill. New pitcher for the Mariners, Andres Munoz. This will be. Here's number 15 for him. A 1 1 record of 277 ERA. And he's going to face longtime favorite of short, the shortstop Brandon Crawford. He's going to pinch hit. And he bats for Casey Schmidt, the rookie. A very veteran hitter up at the plate. A couple of World Series rings with these Giants. All time. First pitch. Weak ground ball. Crawford the backhand and a whip toss out of first base. And Crawford is disposed of on one pitch. One away back to the top of the order, Lamont Wade Jr. Wade smoked a double out to right field, his second at bat. He's having a really good year. One out, nobody on all time. Slider for a strike. Bounces that one one and one.
Both runs for the Giants came back in the fourth on the two run home run by Sable. Three straight sliders to Wade. He got him. Punch that ticket with another slider. Two outs. Quality pitch here by Mooney. Just disappeared down at the bottom of the below the bottom of the zone. Two outs here is Peterson. Oh, that gets called a strike. Oh, fastball that Munoz has thrown was that first pitch to Crawford, who she grounded out on. Until now. Top line strike, one and one. I could own two, I beg your pardon. That was a strike. Strike three called. Peterson barely had time to settle in the box. Munoz, a couple of strikeouts in a 1 2 3 8 inning. Ty France is making his Mariners bobblehead debut on Tuesday, July 18th. The first 20,000 fans will score this exclusive collectible. You know, what better way to make your bobblehead debut than while holding a baguette as a bat uh, before the Mariners take on the Twins? You can get your tickets at Mariners.com. All tied at two as we reach the top of the ninth. Nightfall here in San Francisco. Well, the Giants' closer is one of the best in the game, Camilo Doval. The Giants loan all-star this year. Our Verizon player profile. 24 saves and 26 opportunities this year. A lot of strikeouts, a lot of ground balls as well. A 173 average. And he'll touch triple digits tonight more than likely. Make quite a name for himself as we look at Mike Ford leading off for the Mariners. Bottom third of the order. Ford, Dylan Moore, and Colton Wan. Ty France is in the on-deck circle. And first pitch to Mike Ford. Ball one. Mike single to left. Walk. Strikeout looking. Ball tough. You mentioned it. A 173 batting average against. 1 0 to Mike Ford. Good up to catch him. Mike Sable. Worse than the Navy Board. Catchers can take up. Oof. Yeah. It hit everything but the knee pad. One on one to Mike Ford. On the money. Base hit. Mike Ford to get the Mariners going here in the ninth. He jumped on a 1 1 pitch. A pitch run for him. We right, talked about the velocity that time 99 upper outside corner and Ford able to get to it and pull it with some authority. Well, the Mariners have to go ahead and run aboard at first base. Caballero's got a pinch run for Mike Ford. Pinch hitting for Dylan Moore is going to be Ty France. A great opportunity right here for Ty and the Mariners. Go ahead, run is at first base here at top of the ninth. First pitch on Duvall. Caballero, great break. Down to second. He is in there safely. No hesitation by Cabby's 12th 
stolen base. And this is well executed. Now what a money bag taken off right away. We need to time up that pitcher. He's ready to run. Takes off immediately and gets that bag easily. Strike one to tie. Lays off that break ball. So no tie with great plate coverage. So people have really been pitching him soft stuff away the last few weeks. Let's see what gives here one one. This is the Mariner fans in the building here. Sell out crowd of 40,691 here at Oracle Park. Of course, the Giant fans are going to try to drown them out. It comes a 1 1. Cabby! Wow, he just got back. He was being super aggressive, super daring, and Dave Kapler wants him to take a look at it, but he'll take a pass. Oh, he was ready to go. Quick hands by Wisely, the second baseman. Mariners trying to win their third consecutive game. It'll be the first time they've done it since late May. Sable, the catcher, run out to conference with Camilo Doval. Services team. Coming off a really impressive series win against the Tampa Bay Rays team with the most wins in the major leagues. Two out of three back in Seattle. This is the first of three here in San Francisco, then four in Houston. To the all-star break. Here comes a 1-1. It's the tie. Late. The righties have actually hit that fastball fairly well this year, all things considered. 333 the average. They have not picked up an extra base hit on it, however. It's the breaking ball you really got to watch out for if you're Ty France. See if he's cued in the one two pitch. Ooh. On the first base, Lance Barrett said hit, hit by a pitch. Gabe Kaplan not buying that. He wants his video guy to check with it first. But this could be. Hopefully Ty looks like he's okay. And he took a big body blow yesterday in the collision with Paredes. Now he gets hit. Left hand area. Let's see if Gabe Kapler's wondering if that hit the bat only and not the hand. Judging his reaction, thinking that's got some hand. I don't think he's a method actor or anything like that. You know that. Yeah. This should be our best look. Coming in, coming in, that's a good look. Got a little both. See, that's the hard part. Yeah. It's really impossible to judge if it hit, which it hit first. Yeah. But it, he definitely, he got some off his hand area, no doubt. That looks like it got the knob first. Now I'm not saying it didn't get tie at all. Well, I think the knob of the bat caught the brunt of it. The noise indicated it might be. The noise indicated that he got some of the knob. Yeah, I, I would I would think based on that he's coming back to the batter's. Box. Oh yeah, look at that. that's a good look right there. After review, the call stands. The batter is hit by the pitch. Oh. San Francisco will lose their challenge. Popular call in Seattle, not so much here in San Francisco.
Mariners got their first run on a wild pitch. He's back in the fourth. Fielder's choice RBI runs three hits, no errors, and they've left three on. A strategizing going on right now, and pitching coach Andrew Bailey had a nice career with the Angels and a few other teams. Going to turp her out there. So Colton Wong, he slashed the single to left, uh, to center rather, last time up. He's one for three. Mariners have runners at first and second. Nobody out, going to move the runners up. Giants looking for the bunt, ready to crash from the corners. Wong doesn't show. Infield moves. He shows, but oh, bunted it foul. Could not get it fair. The ball does not seem like a pleasure to bunt against. A nearly 100 mile an hour fastball to go along with the slider, which you just threw. Mariners have one sacrifice bunt on the season, J.P. Crawford. Here we go, the 0 1 pitch. Shows bunt. Cabby's going to get third without a throw, without a bunt getting down. He did a great job coming in from behind as J.D. Davis, the third baseman, was halfway down the line. He saw the free bag and said, That's mine. Look at him. So alert. Well done. Absolutely no chance. A couple of stolen bases. That's the second time he's done that this year. He is always looking to be on the move. And man, they, they beat that wheel play. Fly ball base hit gets a run in and at the corners again. Right to the first baseman. Cabby's hung up. They'll throw over the third. He is back safely. The bases are loaded. He drew a throw, got back safely, sets it up for J.P. Crawford. How about that? Base running, huh? Now the Mariners are, if they are to take the lead in this game, it's destined to come on a bleeder a bloop a something because it seems like more times than not when they've hit the ball hard they've had nothing to show for it but when it's been the other way around they've cashed in here's JP swinging a miss helmet flies off strike one JP struck out open up the game on three pitches didn't swing the bat second time struck out on three pitches he did go down swinging since then a ground out the second and a base hit to right That'll get the job done. Deep drive in the right field. Cabby, good speed. Yastrzemski will throw to second. J.P. Crawford delivers a sack fly. The Mariners have a 3-2 lead here. Top nine in San Francisco. RBI for J.P. His 31st. Adam boys and dap him up in that dugout. What an impact Jose Caballero makes in this ninth inning for the base hit lifted for the pinch runner Caballero who swipes second swipes third is able to draw a throw back to third base to get the bases loaded and then J.P. Crawford just a quality plate appearance there getting the sack fly and taking the lead. Ty France tag he's at third one out here's Julio three two Mariners top nine. It's one of the best in the business, Doval. And tight to Julio. Julio will walk. Ground out to second. Line out to center. And a fielder's choice RBI in the seventh inning. Tied to score at 2 2. Line drive. Left field. That's going to get down. Ty Fred scores. Now is up a 4 2 lead. Juan coming to third. Getting the wave on. He's going to score. Julio with a two run double. Mariners with a 5 2 lead, top nine in San Francisco. 
Another big moment for Julio Rodriguez, a three RBI night. A chance for Julio here inside Oracle Park. He has really hit the ball hard three times now tonight. That ball was laced. He's been able to get the ball in the air, punch it to center field with authority, this time pulled. Looking more like Julio these days. Fun watching Wong score from first. 5 2 lead. Kelnick with one out. Strike one. JK with a double, a hustle double, fifth inning. One for four. An RBI out there. Julio, he's a base running threat. He may be daring. And there he goes. Julio, and the ball gets all the way through. Julio with a stolen base. Stolen base, Julio, his 20th and 25 attempts. Back-to-back oh, -back 20 steal campaigns for Julio, his first two seasons in the majors. Giants bring that infield up close. J.K. knows fly ball base hit's going to get it done here. 5-2 Mariners, one out. One and two. What an inning here in San Francisco. Top of the ninth inning. Mariners put three on the board and looking for more. Kelnick gets timeout. And look at Duvall this year. He's been one of the best closers in baseball. This is his three runs match a season high. Only the second time he's allowed this many. Not his night. One two pitch. Kelnick strikes out. Two away. So Teo can pick up that extra run. So two down. Teo. Enfield dribbler back in the fourth came around to score. Mariners first run. Inside ball one. Done giant fans here at Oracle Park, a 5-2 Mariner lead. 1-0. There's a strike. And how about Paul Seawald warming up? When Munoz pitched in the eighth inning, they kind of tipped the hand that he would be available tonight. Seawald, that is. Five out save just recently. Munoz did throw a lot of pitches. 1-1. Through the right side, base hit, Teo Hernandez scores. Julio, and the Mariners' lead is now 6-2 here in the ninth. Smart baseball man, Oscar Hernandez. Pitch me outside, I'm going outside. Going oppo, picks up an RBI. That's his 49th. Now, Gabe Kapler has not seen his all-star closer give up this many runs all season. A four run ninth inning. First time for everything. Here's Cal. A speed pitch strike one. Cal, the eighth man to the plate here in the ninth inning. JP with an RBI. Julio with two. Gasker Hernandez with an RBI. What an inning. 0 oh 2. Caballero, instigator, igniter. Big part of the success here in the ninth inning. Gets away and Tails going to advance. Man, the free 90 feet the Mariners have gotten tonight. And of course, they swipe bags. They've earned those, but between wild pitches and pass balls, it's been a problem for the Giants buying on plate this evening. For the Mariners, Abundanza. Beautiful. Cal one and two, two out runner at second. High fly ball right field. Give it Chase Yastrzemski. He's got it measured. He's on the track, and that'll do it for the Mariners. But a wonderful ninth inning. They put four on the board to take a six-two lead. Bottom nine here in San Francisco.
Mariners baseball is brought to you by Alaska Airlines from the West Coast to the world. Earn and redeem miles to over a thousand destinations with our One World Alliance members. And by Tequila Herradura, discover what makes a legend extraordinary awaits. Oh, what a ninth for the Mariners. A four run ninth inning. And for Camilo Duvall, the most runs he's ever allowed in a game in his career. The All Star closer gets tagged. Meanwhile, Paul Seawald back up on the mound. Seawald working the third straight day. And despite the Mariners with a four run lead here in the bottom of the ninth, Scott Service going with his closer, not taking any chances. He had him up anyway, and he's going to stick with him. Well, he's hot right now. All right, in 3 4 5 coming up. Ty France stays in the game. He's at first base. Entering the fray in left field, AJ Pollock. First pitch from Pollock. Outside to JD Davis. Davis, strikeout. A couple of ground outs, 0 for 3. Six runs on 10 hits for the Mariners. Swing and a miss. One walk. Davis to be followed by Conforto and Yastrzemski, both left handers. High target from Cal. Down the line, trouble. Pollock, ball comes right to him. Soon as he enters the ball game, a leadoff double, J.D. Davis. 14th double of the season, his first hit tonight. Well, this was right over the plate. And our EQC tracer, a slider that did not break exactly where Seawald wanted it to, and he paid the price. Brings up Conforto. One for two. Walk, run, score tonight. First pitch from Paul. Took a lot off. Strike one. See what a one, two, three, ninth yesterday in the seven, six win over the Rays. A one, two, three, ninth in the eight, three win Saturday over the Rays. Man, so in two. Fastball has been so good against lefties this year. A lot of swing and miss. And when they have put it in play, they haven't done much with it at all. It's on granted to Conforto. Lefties batting 091 against that four seamer from Seawall. Runner at second, nobody out. Here's the 02. Five ball as he play Julio. One down. Here's your Skremski walking a couple of flyouts. Fly it out to right center field. Kelmick ran it down in the fourth. Fly it out to Julio in the sixth. J.B. Crawford shading up the middle. Gino even with the back foot on the grass at third. Ball one. Julio deep, a few steps shaded towards left. Pollock straight away and left. And deep. 1 0. Down even to 1 1. Last two fastballs haven't been quite as high up in the zone as we normally see from Seawall when they're effective. Down the way with both of them. One was the out. 1 1 pitch. Long can't get it. Not tall enough on that one. Here's Kelnick. And he gets it back to the cutoff now. Ty France. Giants making some noise here. Double play is going to do the Mariners really good right here. They can get Luis Matos to ground into one. Now both the hits so far have been on sliders. That one better located than the previous one, and yet Dostrinsky still able to work the base hit out of it. Spot looking for the double play. One out, runners at the corners. Up to 0 for 3. Scrabs it out his last two times up. This time, fly ball right field. Long run, Kelnick. Not going to get there. Mm -hmm. 
Celtics looking to win their third consecutive game. Last time they did it was late May when they won four consecutive. Here comes the 01. And from Seawall. He's got him 02 now. Yeah, that's better location right there. Top line up and in. Seawall doesn't really have a great ground ball pitch. His best option would be the sweeper, that slider to a right hander. You can get one right here. The 0 2. Swing and a miss. He checked his swing. Punched out. Two down. He committed, tried to hold up, but he was already through the zone. A strikeout for Paul. Two outs. Look how far Cal Raleigh is set up. I mean, he's batting in the other batter's box right here. And Cal does that a lot when he really, hey, I need you to make this guy chase. This was a 2-2 game until the top of the ninth, and the Mariners went for a four spot. Here's Blake Sable. First pitch strike. He homered fourth inning to give the Giants a 2-1 lead after the Mariners have taken a 1-0 lead top half of that inning. The 1 He's got him 0-2 on the doorstep of a W. Able taking a couple of moments, cost time. It's granted time by Lance Barrett, the whole plate on fire. See Wald listening for what Cal Raleigh wants. Here comes the 0 2 pitch. Just outside, 1 and 2. They have won five consecutive games against the Mariners here in this ballpark. It's close to ending. Seawall trying to put the final knot together. The pitch. Two balls, two strikes. This is wild. Two and two, two out, two on. Six two lead. Mariners. The pitch. Ooh. Full count. She was hit, don't want to load him up and put a grand slam as a possibility to tie it up. Well, this is interesting here. A lot of sliders recently. In and out right here. The 3 2 from Seawall. The pitch. Fly ball center field. Julio giving ground. He's got it measured. He's on the track and it's gone. Blake Sable, his second home run tonight. He's driven in five. And things have tightened up in a big way. Six, five Mariners, bottom nine in San Francisco. Got it on a 3 2 pitch. This is the first extra base hit a lefty has against Seawald's fastball this year. And on our EQC tracer. Seawald didn't even look, he knew. Pete Woodworth, the pitching coach, coming out. Boy, that stings. Still up a run, it ain't over. And we've seen Paul in this inning. Not always get that fastball up to that top line or up and above that top line. And that time, even though it was on the outer edge of the plate, it was a pitch that Sable was able to get to. Both of his home runs have come on fastballs up. And he's shown the ability to get to that. And now Wilmer Flores will grab it back, come off the bench. So Wilmer Flores, a guy the Mariners, Paul Seawall, has to get right here. That's in this game. Let's get out of here. Flores at 250. Eight homers, 24 runs batted in. First pitch misses, ball one. And shooting for second base from Brett Wisely. 1 0. Here's the pitch. Base hit. In the hole, JP Smothers. Base hit. Tying run at first base.
fourth hit given up by Seawalt here in the ninth. Well, he got the ground ball. But unfortunately, not right at J.P. Crawford. Impressed that he was able to get to it, but that was it. And now, it's another veteran in Crawford coming up. Six, seventh man to the plate. Brandon Crawford swung the first pitch. Pinch hit and grounded out last time up. First pitch. Speed pitch in there, first strike. So close to a win, he can taste it. Everybody on their feet here at Oracle Park in San Francisco in the first of three. What a thriller. The 0-1. Swing and a miss. 0-2. There it is. That's the location. That's what he's wanted. Seawalt trying to close this baby down. He's ahead of Brandon Crawford. 0-2-2 out. Tying run at first. The pitch. Up high. Ball one. One and two. for Crockett just hitting 220 with four home runs. Seawald, the one-two pitch. He got him! Straight three and the Mariners win this game! 6-5 final. Seawald, bumpy ride, ninth inning, but he survives, and the Mariners have won three consecutive ball games, and it's a five-game losing streak here at Oracle Park. What a finish. It's nice to see the Mariners lineup able to pick up Mariners pitching staff a little bit and specifically Paul Seawall. We don't see that very often from Paul at all in the ninth inning. Sounds like the fans here at Oracle Park aren't too pleased with the Mariners post game celebration on the field. But what a scrappy ninth inning from this Mariners team. It's what gave them the cushion to help win this game in the bottom half of the ninth inning. That's a fantastic win of the Mariners. It feels like Dave starting to get a little snowball starting to get I a little like momentum it. we haven't seen much of that this year I Hopefully like it, it continues tomorrow and all you fans can unbuckle your seat belts right about now as we send you off to Mariners post game with Angie and Dave Valley guys thanks so much uh, the closers job is to bend but don't break that's exactly what Paul Sewald does a big moment tonight for the Mariners uh, Camilo Duvall hasn't allowed four runs all season that is until tonight and it was the bottom of the order setting the table and the top of the order delivering tonight Dave in the ninth inning. You just love to see that the offense picking up the pitching staff for the Mariners. This is the first time they've scored four runs in the ninth inning all season long. You got Ford getting things rolling right here and he's starting to feel pretty good about it right there's some balls getting hit hard off of their closer Caballero comes in to pinch run and what does he do very first pitch. He does not waste any time. He just goes ahead and swipes the bag. Then this one, a little cross up on the defense by the Giants. Nobody's over at third, so Caballero says, okay, if you want to give it to me, I'll take it. And then Mr. Crawford hits a sack fly to right field to get things going. Yeah, this was fantastic. A, a wonderful ninth inning, but we want to get right back to San Francisco. Our Jen Mueller standing by with Julio, who did a bulk of the damage tonight. Jen? Well, and he is getting chants from the Mariners fans here in San Francisco. Look, you get to the ninth inning. You know that Duvall is one of the best closers right now and an all-star. What's the challenge in generating offense against him? I mean, it was definitely a challenge, but I feel like we all stay committed to our plan. And, and when we were out there, everybody taking care of what they needed to do. And we got it done in that way. Cabby, as a pinch runner, how much did he affect that inning? Oh, it was electric. It was electric. I literally told him it was like unbelievable what you did, and he definitely changed the momentum and took it towards us. You talk about doing what you needed to do at the plate. How much of that approach can you trace back to that series against Tampa and what we've seen the last two nights? Uh, I feel like everybody knows how we play, but I feel like we kind of step away a little bit from it, and we're kind of getting back into it and getting getting back into being the Mariners team that we know we, we can be and. It's fun to watch. It's fun to watch when everybody's locked in and taking care of all this stuff. You know, I think it was probably fun for Brian Wu tonight, facing the team he grew up cheering for as a kid, whole bunch of friends and family in attendance. What impresses you about the composure and, as a result, the execution? I mean, it's, it's unbelievable just going, uh, even though he's young, even though he's, even though he's a rookie, but just the composure that he shows every time he's up on the mound and every time he steps out to compete. And it's great. It's great every time to see him out there. And, and definitely what he did today was, was special. I think there's some celebrating that needs to be done inside. Go inside and enjoy this one. <laughs> Fire 
fireworks starting momentarily, but you know what, Angie? The Giants had won five straight games against the Mariners here at Oracle Park. That streak ends tonight as the Mariners now have won three straight. Jen, thank you so much. If my math is correct, he's talking about the rookie woo. And, and um, I'm sorry, but like Wu is older than Julio. Okay. <laughs> he was talking like he was a very seasoned veteran. Exactly. No, yeah, it the was rookie a, was looking pretty good out there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was uh, it was pretty funny here. Um, I love the fact that the Mariners did so many little things tonight. This and was it, good to see. It, it is, and, and I love the aggression that I saw on the bases. The Mariners ended up with three stolen bases here tonight. I like them forcing the action, taking opportunities, taking chances. We saw that with Caballero in the ninth inning, stealing second, and all also stealing third and also Julio stole a bag as well so I love the stolen base you know as a former catcher I thought that was a great part of the action because I used to like to go throw guys out I was just gonna but say what do you mean you like stolen bases but when they're successful catcher. you love to see it happen because it creates action and you know this I don't know if this was a piece of the change of the rules but I love mm -hmm. that more teams are being more aggressive and they're looking to steal yeah Tell me that was not fun watching those guys stealing Absolutely. bases. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Though I think Do just it more. the I love only it. two disengagements, the bigger bases, all of it helps uh, when you're trying to steal bases. Uh, we got more with Dave in just a second, and we're going to talk a lot about the base hits. They were timely tonight. The sack flies, all those little things. Maybe even more a little bit about the stolen bases. But we don't want to overlook the defense. J.P. Crawford in a tie game in the eighth inning. Make sure the first hitter of the inning, Brandon Crawford, doesn't get a hit with this nifty backhanded run on the play. Yeah, that was okay. That was awesome. I'm coming with the fire, bet I leave you shook.